We've come to HB Bearings. Where they supply bearings to hypercar manufacturers. And we can't tell you who they are, but we can guarantee you will have heard of them. Welcome to this week's Wolf and Chips. Firstly, I'd really like to thank Interco for sponsoring Swarf and Chips. They do special steels and alloys. But the reason I'm thinking of that is, look at all this material behind me. Now, they do material from EN8, which is your mild steels, all the way to stainless, your H13s, um, your cast steels, your aluminiums. But they also do peak, Teflon. So really, I don't think there's a material they don't do. But Something I've noticed while I've been studying here is most of their steels are hollow. So why do you think all this steel is hollow? Well, that's because it saves them an operation when they're making. It saves them having to drill and bore it. But something else is, as you can see, is this material is spray painted pink. And there's other, there's, there's yellows and greens. And there's a real good reason behind that is because they're iOS 9001, everything has tags and has to be traceable. So if they lose this tag, then they're not sure what the material is. So they actually spray paint it so that if that tag is lost, it doesn't matter. They still know what it is and where it's for. Now, what do you think could be made only out of hollow bar? So here in the turning section, you can see that they make all of the housings, which are always hollow, out, made out of hollow bars. So it saves them drilling and boring out the, out, the, out the middle. But that's not the most interesting thing. What I find fascinating is they've got loads of different lathes. So they've got a big lathe from lead, lead over there. Um, but they do six millimeter bores all the way up to one meter bores, which is absolutely wild. I mean, you can't make a one meter bore part on here. Um, so those are normally going to be, those big parts going to be forged, forged um, material, not just coming out of a rolling mill. So the, the roughing here is absolutely fascinating. And it's not just steels that uh, they work in, as, as Tom mentioned. They, they work in like peak, in, in, tof, in tofnol, in uh, teflon. So these are all really wild materials. And it must be a complete nightmare to clean them, clean the machines out after they finish machining them. I mean, you look at the size of the, these are some double, sorry, these double radial, radial bearings. Yeah. Fantastic. So these are these are really heavy duty bearings, but these are <laughs> these are for the people who uh, need a very specialist bearing. You can't just pick them out of a catalog. They need to be um, smaller, slimmer than the standard bearings with big factors of safety, or they need to have the extra factors of safety for, for the crazy loads they're going to be put under. These are for the stuff like the British steel industry, not just automotive. We're talking F1. Uh, we're talking paper manufacturers. So really specialist bearings for paper manufacturers. The Anything that's got a bearing in it, it's gonna have an, a bearing from HB. That's what Darren's been telling me all this time. Even some of the machine tools on site have HB bearings in them. They're using them to make other bearings, so they must be good. So next, we're in their milling section, and we're gonna be looking at how some of the bearing casings start like this, and they finish like that. Now that looks amazing, and it's actually been done on the machine next to me using their fourth axis. And while I'm studying, Look at the size of the trunnion behind me. That machine is huge and has a really good working envelope. But we're actually going to move around the milling section now and grab one of the guys to see what he's actually doing on his machine. So can I just grab you quick for a quick chat? <laughs> so what are you actually doing on this machine at the moment? Uh, so at the moment, I'm drilling the holes for the rivets, which hold the two parts of the cage together. Uh, so after I've drilled the rivet holes, I'm going to be machining the pockets in which the rollers sit in. And the rivets basically just hold it all together when it's assembled in a complete bearing. That's great, thank you. So as you can see, look at the size of the work they're doing on these small tables. So they're really taking some of these machines to the limits. Now, we have another machine behind you, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, ask this gentleman because he's, uh, he's setting up as we speak. So. But as you can see, they're doing different things on all the machines. And they've actually now moved from fourth axis and three plus two. And they've actually got a Herco three plus two as well, which as you can see inside, they don't just do one material on these machines. They do all materials on all machines. And actually all the guys here can jump on any machine if needed. So you've seen some of the parts and you've seen how tight the tolerances are. So we're actually now gonna jump to rowing 
who's going to show us how they achieve such tight tolerances. And I'm amazed at the diversity of machine tools here. We've got old machines, we've got new machines. It's a brand new K100 Kellenberger, but this has got full automation. So these, so these are the grid plates they laser cut to handle loads of different sizes. And all it does is the roller bearing. So they get started off with, they get turned, uh, drilled, and then shot blasted. So this is the shot blaster finish. Then they get finished, ooh, on this machine. Uh, look at that beautiful ground finish there. Beautiful, so they do the, the OD, which is, it's actually got a little taper on it, a little angle. And then it's got uh, a, the, the, the machine, the, the faces as well, um, which, which is lovely. But if you look at the little boxes here, there are 11 mil taper, bear, taper rollers, but they got they measure them so tightly, they've got plus one micron, zero to zero micron. So that is within the, the precision of, I don't know, the precision of the tool, the, the, the machine they're measuring, probably within Plus, minus half a micron, plus half a micron, it's absolutely amazing. Then minus a micron. So these are really um, precise. But Darren said it's all about the consistency as well. It's not just about getting it right once. It's about getting it right every time. And that's what's important with bearings. You need to match up uh, all the bearings in a single bearing housing. You need to all either be plus one over, minus one, or zero. But enough about automation uh, and all the standard products they do, because as, as cool as it is, this is what we just saw in the turning cell. So now these are all getting brought over. These are the double radial bearings. They're getting brought over to do finished grinding. So all this bear marker pen uh, lines they got on here to show, they need finished grinding. So you do the internal uh, two radial grooves and then this OD here. The way they hold them is fascinating. I'm sure it's pretty standard in the bearing manufacturing industry, but I've not seen it very much. It's a, using a mag base rather than a chuck. Because if you hold it with a chuck, you get a little bit of distortion, and that's going to affect your final accuracy. When you release the chuck, you, you will ground it round when you, you were clamped. But when you release the chuck, it'll go out around. So they, they clamp uh, with a mag base on the face. Absolutely fascinating. Get fantastic um, precision. And amazing precision from a 20-year-old machine. This machine's been on the shop floor here for 20 years. And they've been making uh, parts on it for the, as, as long as that. And they make something like 15,000 roller bearings for, for 13 series bearings on the, on the Venga. But on this, they're making loads of bespoke parts as well. Keep following me. Come on, let's have a look. So they've got, they don't just do radials. They do taper, like cone bearings as well. And you look at the beautiful finish on here. They all get heat treated. That's why they have to get shot blasted, especially the roller bearings have to get shot blasted because they get heat treated. It's uh, between, I think, 60 and 65 Rockwell that Darren mentioned. And here we go through the, the, the manual cell now, which is, it's always important that you can, it's all well and good having man, CNCs, which are consistent, but for those little one-off, which is HP bearings are well known for their good bespoke one-off parts, you still need a good set of manual machines that can, uh, that you can be run by very skilled operators making really complex parts. And you see they've all got these magnetic bases, which are absolutely fascinating. I mean, look at all of this stuff. This takes some real knowledge and some real skill Absolutely amazing, but uh, they achieve one and a half micron run out on their bearings. Uh, I'm going to find out how. You don't know how you, you don't know if you actually got that run out unless you can inspect it. So over to Tom on the inspection. So we're now in the inspection department and they've actually, trust me, to start this cycle. We're actually going to check this part. So hopefully this will, oh, you've got to love a uh, CNC CMM. Now, they actually check every process. They don't just check the component fire, uh, when it's finished, but all the grinders can actually are actually all trained as well to run all these machines. See, they don't just have one CMM, they actually have three. They have three CNC CMMs. They also have a non-contact CMM, which I've never seen before. So. Anyone who's out on the shop floor is actually trained in this room as well. So they can do, as well as do their their day-to-day -day job, they can actually check their own parts. Because And the reason they've done that is quite clever. They've trained everybody to inspect their own parts for a reason. And that's, they do have a inspection department, but they were getting backlogs of all them machines bringing parts in constantly, the, the team just couldn't keep up. So they've now trained everybody to be able to CMM and inspect their own work so that there's no backlog just on one department, but they can actually inspect the parts through as well. So if they're, if they're grinding something to, and you, you heard from Rowan how tightly some of these tolerances are, they can actually inspect their parts and then re-grind them if needed. Now, 
I think I'm stood in front of the oldest machine in here now, and I won't like to say how old it is, but this is a shadow graph. Now, I've, I've seen these before, but I've never actually used one. And you can all correct me if I'm wrong, because I probably am, but I think these were the ancestor of the CMM. I think this is where inspection started. Wow, Tom, I've learned so much about bearings. It's not, doesn't matter where they go, whether it's paper mills, British steel industry, or even vintage cars from the 30s, they all have to be super precise and need all of the complex operations we've just seen today. What have you learned, Tom? Well, you're right, we've learned so much today, but also, bearings can be made out of any material, from your hardest of steels, your stainlesses, but down to peak and Teflon. Have you ever heard of a Teflon bearing? We've learned something, I hope you have too. Thank you for watching Swarf and Chips.